if there are other civilizations which are older than our own and have got much further than we have, they must have very advanced technologies. And I wonder what forms these technologies take. Well, again, very difficult to estimate, but there are stars which are billions of years older than our sun. Some of them very likely have planets, and therefore I can imagine civilizations immensely beyond the capabilities of our own. What capabilities those are, no one can tell, in the same sense that even the most fantastic prognostications from the middle of the 19th century about uh, the technology of the 20th century all fell short. People like Jules Verne yes. asked to imagine what transportation devices people would have in 1950, imagined a kind of Victorian living room yes. with plush velvet furniture in a gondola at the bottom of an enormous balloon which went from New York to San Francisco in only a few weeks. And he was, of course, the most imaginative speculative thinker of the 19th century. Others would have been more cautious. So it's very difficult to predict far into the future, even 100 years, when uh, not only new technology, but new scientific principles may be discovered. So far, we've been talking about contact either by radio or direct physical contact by space probes. But there might be other means of doing it. It does, I know, sound very like science fiction to talk about teleportation or thought travel, but do you think this is entirely out of the question at the moment? And if so, should we be considering it seriously? Well, there's very little in science which is absolutely out of the question, but uh, I don't know of any evidence which suggests that we should invest a lot of time and money on those particular uh, ventures, although I would not oppose anyone who thought that it was a useful investment of his time. Then what should we be doing about this research? I would say that um, there, there are several lines of approach, all of which uh, look promising and should be pursued further. One is laboratory work on the uh, question of the origin of life, making the molecules which uh, here were able to reproduce themselves and led eventually to us. Secondly, a study of the organic chemistry in places like Jupiter, comets, and the interstellar medium. It's remarkable that the molecules of life are littering the cosmos. Thirdly, the space vehicle exploration of the neighboring planets, in particular for life or life-related compounds. If it turns out, for example, that Mars is lifeless, that is not a major disappointment, because then we have two planets near each other in space and time, life developed on one and not on the other. You have the classic case of an experiment and a control, and uh, it would be very important to investigate why life on the Earth and not on Mars. But even more exciting would be if uh, Mars turns out to have life, for us to investigate what kind of life it is, how similar, how different from life on Earth, that will immensely broaden the science of biology. And then uh, there is certainly the serious work, long-term, patient, cautious investigation of uh, other stars for possible signals being sent our way. After all, we have made a start. And I'm thinking, of course, of Pioneer 10, which has bypassed Jupiter and is now on its way out of the solar system. Carrying a plaque with a message. That's right. Uh, Pioneer 10 is the first uh, interstellar spacecraft of mankind, but only by accident. That is, it was designed to examine Jupiter and uh, came so close to Jupiter that it was ejected from the solar system by Jupiter's gravity. That being the case, we uh, thought it would be a nice idea to have a kind of cosmic greeting card on it in the remote contingency that it were at some future time to be intercepted by some advanced civilization. And so a, a six by nine inch gold anodized aluminum plaque was designed, which uh, has a mysterious part and uh, an obvious part to it. The mysterious part is the man and the woman to the right of the plaque. And they will be mysterious because there will not be men and women anywhere else. The rest of the message we think is written in the galactic clear, in the one language we have in common with everyone else, namely the language of science. And uh, it essentially indicates the planet from which the spacecraft was launched, the star uh, around which that planet goes, out of the several hundred thousand million stars in the galaxy, it specifies one, and the year of launch out of the 10,000 million year history of the galaxy. And it does it by uh, reference to a set of galactic clocks called pulsars. Well, the chance of this uh, being intercepted is small, 
precisely because space is so empty. It's traveling so slowly, even though it's the fastest thing we've ever launched, that it will take it 80,000 years to get to the nearest star, but it's not headed towards the nearest star. So it will uh, very likely survive for billions of years, but in the dark of interstellar space. It will be the oldest artifact of mankind, because uh, a billion years from now, uh, mountain building and erosion will have destroyed everything on the Earth, and yet uh, this plaque will remain intact. So, in fact, the plaque may last longer than the Earth itself, which is really rather a sobering thought. Yes, Carl, thank you very much.